I wanted to make a short video about people who submit to God and people who are guilty. The uh, verses I'm going to quote are from chapter 68, uh, verse 35 to 38. God says in the Quran, What, shall we treat those who submit like the guilty? What is the matter with you? How do you judge? Or do you have a book wherein you read that you shall have whatever you choose? So what God is saying in there is, do you think that we are going to treat those who submit? So the word Muslim means, uh, th that's the word used in this verse. The word Muslim means a person who uh, submits to God. Linguistically, this implies obedience, somebody who obeys God. So when God gives an order, this person obeys. God says, do you think that we will treat this person who submits like the guilty? Uh, the, the word for the guilty is uh, mujrimin. Uh, I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but uh, that is the word used, and it means guilty. So who are the guilty? Those who break the law. Those are guilty. Those are the guilty party. And God says, do you think that we are going to treat those who obey the law like those who break it? And then God says, what is the matter with you? How do you judge? So basically, God is, God is saying, are you, are you crazy? Are you stupid? What's, what's wrong with you? How can you come to this conclusion? And then God asks, or do you have a book wherein you read that you shall have whatever you choose? So God is basically asking, did you come to this conclusion from, from a certain book? Is there, you know, did you read this somewhere that God promised you this? That the, the those who obey and that those who disobey, those who submit and the guilty, that they will have uh, the same destiny, the same outcome? I mean, clearly God is making a point here. And this is actually repeated in many places throughout the Quran. It's a very important verse. We are defined by what we do to submit to God. Depends on how we act. It has nothing to do with the label we attach to ourselves. So anybody can call themselves a Muslim. Anybody can call themselves a Christian, as a matter of fact. But that really doesn't mean anything. These words have lost meaning. That does not mean anything. You can declare yourself a Muslim and do what God forbade. And you're simply deluding yourself. If you do that, God tells you clearly, what is the matter with you? You think we're going to treat you the same as we treat those who actually submit? This false idea that the word Muslim signifies belonging to a religion, uh, it, that's basically just how the word evolved. It, it does not mean that. It does not mean you pray in, an, uh, you know, in a mosque and it does not mean you have an Arab name. That is irrelevant. To God, that does not make you a Muslim. Obedience, the actual definition of the word Muslim makes you a Muslim. Anything else leads to destruction. If you really want to consider this, let's, let's just kind of try to take it to an extreme. Uh, if you have a ruler of a country start kidnapping women and raping them. If you have, a, uh, for example, like the old Ottoman uh, emperors, they had harems. Are they Muslims? They ruled Muslim empires, and yet they violated God's law. They are going to hell. There is no question about that. If you uh, take, uh, let's say, you just cheat somebody in business, I don't know, you shortchange them $5. Now, if we take that action, and we extrapolate it to extreme, where a wealthy hedge fund manager... Uh, screws his investors out of a uh, billion dollars, everybody can, or, or a whole pension plan, everybody that is a part of that pension plan that just got robbed of all their life savings is, uh, is going to be pissed. And all of us are going to be outraged. But very few people are going to be outraged at uh, you know just somebody cheating somebody else for $5 in business. But if you obey God and you don't do that, and if everybody obeys God and nobody, you know, everybody is honest in business, even at a five billion dollar mark, everything is going to be perfect. But when something is a sin, as you increase it in, in, in you know, increase its levels, the sin gets worse and worse and worse and worse. And that is not how you know these are terrible sins. And God says, 
You think, you know, th this is why obedience is so important, even at the very basic level. And this is why God says, you think I'm going to treat those who obey, who submit, like the guilty. What's wrong with you? Obedience to God is everything. Without obedience, nothing works. And God clearly says that if we do not obey, we are not going to be uh, treated the same. It is very important to remember this. And uh, I, I hope people do. Because uh, when, when your sins are small, you know, you think they're no big deal. But what in reality what is happening is you are failing in the first grade. So you're never going to come to, uh, you know, college level courses with God, which are hard trials. Because you already proved with small sins that you're already a failure. So just because God isn't putting you through a tough trial doesn't mean that you are somehow blessed. As a matter of fact, that can mean that you are miserably failing. You don't, you don't need to be tested any further. If you can't control yourself for $5, you will surely not control yourself for $5 billion. And that's just one sin I use it as an example. Uh, there are many others. The Quran is the guidance. And those who follow it and those who do not are not going to be treated the same, nor is their destiny the same, nor is their final resting place the same. It does not matter the level at which you are breaking the basic commandments of God. And I always refer to um, chapter 6, verses 151 to 153. These are your, uh, your, your basics, but there is, there is more to it. But you have to really focus on these basic behaviors first before you can go on. And do not think that uh, the low intensity of your sin is somehow good for you. All that means is that you are absolutely the low of the low who cannot control themselves even with the least of things. So you have a bigger problem. God doesn't need to tempt you with more. So just think about that and uh, reflect on that and hopefully hopefully change. And we are all going through uh, this process of change. Islam is not, you don't just wake up one day and you're a Muslim. It's a growth. It's a, it's a, it is really a struggle, which is uh, in Arabic means jihad. To be a Muslim, to follow all these commandments sincerely and not make a lot of mistakes is a jihad. And it takes many years to perfect. So I hope, I hope people realize that and maybe we can all work together to, to change our behaviors and actually become people who submit to God, who obey God sincerely, whether small or big. So... Good luck.